ծուցյան եւ ծանր բահերին քեզեմ հիշում դույն վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաղթանակի Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today to share these few moments together. Let's begin by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today on this episode of Armenian Christianity today, I want to talk about justice. In particular, we know that here in the United States, we've been well, well we've been really hurt lately by the news and the consequences of a young man being killed. Now unfortunately, unfortunately every single day there are stabbings, there are murders that take place on our streets. Unfortunately every day there are victims of war. But in particular this one incident incident has 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 seeped into the consciousness of the people in claiming in claims for justice. And I'm, of course I'm talking about the situation with Trayvon Martin. Here is a young man who was assaulted, who was killed on the streets of America. His assailant was acquitted recently uh, based on uh, based on statements that he made that he was in it was in self-defense and so on. And I'm not going to get into the case and that's not my purpose today, but what my purpose is is to talk about the issue of justice. This is a very important issue for us as Armenian Christians because when we look at our entire history it is marred by so many incidents of injustice. We have wars, we have genocides. In fact, today as an Armenian nation, you look at us and you could say we really have been victimized, been victims of uh, of a hundred years of a forgotten uh, injustice, of a forgotten genocide that has spewing out injustice to us and told today. So this issue of justice is is something that we as Armenian Christians need to identify with. In fact, when you look at Trayvon Martin's story, this should spark up some kind of sentiment in every Armenian Christian because his story is our story. In other words, when injustice takes place anywhere, it is up to the Armenian Christian to say that as a Christian, I relate to it even more because Jesus first of all talked about justice and as an Armenian, we know counts of injustice. Now, interestingly enough, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about justice. He says that you have heard that you shall not murder, but I tell you that uh, if you harbor anger against your brother, you have murdered. And he says, judge, lest judge not lest you be judged. In other words, Jesus is bringing down a higher sense of justice. And I want to share some ideas about that. In the Armenian church, we have a prayer which is perhaps one of the most sincere prayers that you can pray. In the Badarak we say azmegazmer mihishesser al kututyam ko kavese. We're praying to God. Don't look at my sin as in the way that you would look at anything. Don't look at my sin and judge me. Rather look at me in your mercy. In other words, the justice that God has is not a tit for tat justice. When you look at the case of Trayvon Martin, when you look at any case that takes place, it's about here's this incident took place. So let's assess it. Was it first degree murder? Was it second degree murder? Was it manslaughter? Was it self defense? And accordingly justice is served. we call that justice in other words if it's first degree then there is a tit for tat there is this incident takes place therefore the cause and the effect in god's in god's eyes we are all sinners and this is why jesus is inviting us to take that higher road to understand that for god we are all his children and you cannot separate you cannot delineate that way you cannot judge according to those godly standards you can judge as a human being but god's justice is a fair justice it looks at all human beings as a as as unfortunately as victims of a system of a system that is broken in other words in that system you see that murder is accepted and it can't be it can't be no killing is acceptable in the eyes of the lord 
And I know we try to justify it. Even St. Augustine, you talked about just wars and everything. We try to justify it in many ways as far as uh, you know, uh, self-defense, defense of the country. But when it comes down to it, it's the taking of a life. And God says very clearly that I am the creator of life. You cannot take away that life. That life belongs to me. And so what do we do as Armenian Christians? You read the news, you hear about these tragedies, you hear about injustice, and you say, well, what can I do? What, you know, I'm just sitting here. I want to read my Bible. I want to go to my church, and what's it to me? Well, the Armenian Christian needs to wake up to incidents of injustice. And in this case, I want to say that, okay, what happened to Trayvon Martin? There was a, 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 a judicial process that went through. There was a verdict that was given, and you could accept it. You can't accept it. It really doesn't matter. But what you need to look at are some of the incidents that are taking place every single day. In other words, when we start profiling people because of their race. As Armenians, this takes place every day, right in the streets of Glendale, where we're here. We're right here. In the streets of Glendale, we see racial profiling. In other words, because we are Armenian, we are profiled to be this way or that way. But racial profiling is only one part of it. There's different types of profile. How about gender profiling? How about when you look at women in one way and men in another way? How about economic profiling? When you say because this person has it or the other person doesn't write, wear the right clothes, doesn't have the right car. And so we start profiling people. And this is the danger in doing this. You see, one leads to the other. You cannot start profiling people because of economics, because of gender, nor because of race. And this is why it's so important as an Armenian Christian, we take that high road. In other words, we don't play the tit-for-tat game. We start understanding that as God's children, we have a responsibility, a responsibility to one another, a responsibility to take care. I was so impressed that this week, and I invite you to get out there and look at it, in Holy Etchmiadzin, our Catholicos, His Holiness Karekin II, has established a new office, a new department, which is going to be headed by uh, Bishop Bakrat, uh, Bishop Bakrat Kalustin, which I know your viewers in Canada are familiar with him. He's talking about social dynamics, social justice, about talking about the role of the church. And this is exactly where the church should be. And we've got to applaud these kind of efforts because this is the church in action. You know, we look at the Roman Catholic Church. Of course, uh, His Holiness Pope Francis is in Brazil these days. He's been talking very openly about the church and the poor, about our mission to justice. You see, all of these tie into one another, whether you profile somebody because his skin color is different, because his gender is different than yours, or different than what you might think that gender should be, do, be doing, or that preference. Whatever you're doing, you're playing the God role, and you can't. You can't do that. The reason I'm bringing this up as Armenian Christians, first of all, we are commanded by Christ himself who says, judge not lest you be judged. In other words, you cannot judge another because by the same standard you judge others, God will judge you. In fact, in the Lord's Prayer, what do we say? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So God, forgive me my sins. How? By the same standard by which I forgive others. So if I cannot forgive my brother, if I cannot forgive my neighbor, God cannot forgive me. That's a heavy one. We're placing that standard on ourselves. In other words, we need to clean up our acts. And so we see in a world where there's turmoil, You've got Trayvon Martin situations. You've got serious, big situations taking place in your streets every day. Trayvon Martin being an example of that. You've got mega situations taking place on the streets of the world with suicide bombers who are claiming they're doing so for justice, with wars that are taking place because they are claiming justice.
with genocides that are taking place, and you start creating the injustice again. We as Armenian Christians need to be that first voice that claims justice, a justice that comes from God. Again, the prayer that I, uh, that I shared with you, it comes from the Badarak. Do not remember my sin. Instead, in your mercy, give me that forgiveness. The mercy of God is dependent on us, showing mercy to one another, showing compassion to one another, reaching out to the poor, finding justice in our own towns, in our own families, in our own neighborhoods. I'm inviting you today to get involved in your church. You see, Holy Etchmiadzin, which is the headquarters of the Armenian church, is setting the pace. So we have it, first of all, coming to us from the top. Now it's up to us to find that justice, to find that within our own systems. First of all, with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Secondly, within our communities. Get involved in your church. Talk to your priest. Talk to your priest and say, I think that the social dynamics of this church are so important at this point, we need to put together a peace and justice committee, a, a committee that starts looking at issues of justice within our own communities. This is the call that comes to us today. As Armenian Christians, we are not exempt. In fact, just the opposite. We are called. We are called to the issue of justice. I invite you to take that call seriously, to answer that call wherever it may be. Give yourself some time to pray. Pray for justice. Pray for peace in this world. I look forward to sharing some time with you again next week. Until then, I remind you that give praise and glory always to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.